frail older adults are among the most vulnerable subset of older adults. So as people age, they certainly are more likely to get sick and have uh, adverse health outcomes. The frail subset is the group that really are at uh, a most vulnerable point in their life and, and we think that it's very important to identify those individuals so we can intervene appropriately. In the past it was really pretty much a, a gut sense. Uh, people would look at patients and, and try to make a decision based on, on their sort of clinical gut sense and I think what we've helped to show over the last couple of years is that there really is a, is a way that you, you don't have to use a gut sense. You can still use that but uh, probably using a, a tool to identify people is a better way to go about it. There have been many uh, frailty assessment tools developed over the past uh, decade. Uh, we have one of the most uh, popular and most uh, user-friendly tools. The Hopkins Frailty Assessment Calculator has been extensively studied in, in many different populations. It's also been validated, uh, which means it's been utilized and shown to really uh, predict, uh, to find people who are frail and to predict uh, adverse outcomes. So I think the benefit is really uh, to help the clinician find this vulnerable subset of people. What we found uh, in in the last couple years is that many subspecialists have started using the tool and, and frailty tools to identify uh, vulnerable people in their practices. As we use it in, at Hopkins and elsewhere, we're going to find people that are more vulnerable and then ultimately figure out better ways to, to manage them. By managing them would be to, put, to identify ways to have them have fewer complications and that certainly will save millions and millions of dollars in the coming years and also prevent uh, patient suffering and pain, which is and improve their quality of life, which is a big piece of this. I think a lot of this has evolved from the surgical standpoint, at least, as, as surgeons have noticed that there's a subset of people that they operate on and they just do horribly after the surgery. They're, they're different people, they never really recover. And I think there's a big need to find out who these people are, to predict who the, you know, the people that are gonna have these bad outcomes, and then to find ways to prevent these outcomes from happening. So that in the, in the long run will save, again, millions and millions of dollars.